How can we go from this map to this map? Historical GDP per capita data is hard to get. Still, we have estimates like the ones provided by the Madison Project, which provide information for European countries for a few hundred years. But in a recent paper, we wanted to improve upon that by using machine learning methods to combine that data with data on the places of birth, death, and occupations of hundreds of thousands of biographies to create higher resolution estimates of the GDP per capita of European regions. So why would we use information about famous individuals? And there's two reasons. Basically, some individuals contribute directly to the growth of the regions, like James Watt, by developing a steam engine, contributes to the growth of Scotland and the UK. Other individuals are attracted to wealth, like artists like Michelangelo, that would migrate to places where they could find patrons that could support their art. To train this model, we separated the data into a training set and a test set and would select the model by validating the model that was best at predicting data that it has not seen, data on that test set. So that allowed us to create a model that explains 90% of the out-of-sample variance in GDP per capita of European regions for the last 700 years. But we also wanted to see if our estimates of GDP per capita correlated positively with other measures that we would expect be associated with higher levels of GDP per capita. For instance, urbanization rates in the past 500 years, the average body height of people in the 18th century, well-being in the 1850s, and church building activity in the 14th and 15th century. And in all cases, we find our estimates correlate positively with this process of GDP per capita. But we also use this estimate to reproduce well-known facts. For instance, there is a famous paper by Asimov, Johnson and Robinson that looks at Atlantic ports as one of the things that help explain the development of Western Europe after the discovery of the Americas. And using our estimates, we're able to reproduce the findings from that paper showing that our estimates are in agreement with what we know about our economic history. But to me, what is maybe more interesting about this paper is that it provides a twist on the use of machine learning. Most people have been looking at machine learning as a tool to look into the future. Can we use it to predict what comes next? But what we show in this paper is that machine learning can be very useful as a tool also to look about the past. There are a lot of things that we don't know about the past that we might be able to learn using this type of techniques. And here we show that we can combine rich data, like data on biographies, with data that is valuable but very scarce, like data on GDP per capita, to create regional estimates of the GDP per capita of Europe for the last 700 years. And to me, that's one of the things that is the most beautiful about this paper, that helps us show that machine learning is also a tool that can help us not see where we're going, but where we come from.